A vulnerability in Rust has been discovered, one that specifically affects Windows, and there's a lot of hype around it right now. In theory, by exploiting this bug, you can exploit Rust and get access to a Windows computer. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about how this exploit works and why right now I think it's a little overhyped. Also, if you're new here, Hi, my name is Olava Learning. I make videos about programming security. So if you'd like to learn more about that stuff or you wanna just hang out with me, hit that sub button, really appreciate it. Also, like the video. Now this vulnerability in Windows is related to what is called command injection. Any kind of injection attack is when user input to something like a SQL query or a system command operation is not properly sanitized. So it allows the user to do something that it's not normally able to do. Maybe you're new to the world of security. So let's talk about what a command injection actually is with a practical example in a language like C. Well, it's really easy to understand. So in this program, all we're doing is we're taking input from the user, we're asking them, hey man, what's your name? We read in the name from the user to a buffer, and then we snprintf, meaning we put that buffer inside another buffer to a command that says echo, hey there, name of the person, right? We're just replying to them by using the command line utility echo instead of printf or something like that. It's very common for a lot of applications to go to the command line and parse user input that way. If they need to invoke like a very complicated operation, they don't want to right by themselves, right? Like if you need to tar up a file that you have in your program, you have two options. You can use the library to actually do the compression, or you can depend on tar as it's already written on your computer and just do it via system. The issue with this is if you don't properly sanitize the input from your user, so here we don't do any input sanitization, and we just put that right into the echo hey there buffer, and then put that into the command buff, and then run that in system. Because of this, I can put arbitrary commands into this buffer and then get what is called a command injection. I'm injecting a bash command into the system buffer. So I can show you how to exploit this. So we have our program here, what's your name, triple L. It says, hey there, triple L. Now what if I wanted to do evil stuff in this program, right? Because I have the ability to do a command injection, let me show you how that actually works. Instead of typing my name, triple L, I can type something like an escaped bash command using a command substitution. So you do that like this in bash and I can just type LS for example, right? So via this program, I'm able to put instead of of the data that's expected, I can put a malicious command that gets ran on the command line. So hence, I've injected a command. And if I wanted to, I can get really fancy. I could do, you know, reboot, which would restart the system. I'm not gonna do that because I'm recording a video right now, but you, you, got, you get the point. And thus, the CVE. Critical Rust flaw enables Windows command injection attacks. And that headline sounds very good, very sensational, and we'll get into why it's a little over the top, in my opinion. Threat actors can exploit a security vulnerability in the Rust standard library to target Windows systems and command injection attacks. Track the CVE 2024-25576. This flaw is due to OS command and argument injection weaknesses that can let attackers execute unexpected and potentially malicious commands on the operating system. And again, that paragraph, out of context, very, very dangerous. Like I read this and I was like, dude, no way. What is happening with Rust right now? And then GitHub, one of the authorities that can assign CVSS, gave it a 10 out of 10, which is like, for me, when a CVE has a 10 out of 10 CVSS, that is full remote, unauthenticated, remote code execution. That is like no shit, things are going down, Windows is getting hacked, worms are spreading across the internet. So I read this and I was like, whoa, what is happening? Unauthenticated attackers can exploit it remotely in low complexity attacks without user interaction. I agree. Like that, that's pretty bad. So let's actually go into one of the proofs of concept that exploits this flaw. Okay, so here's an example of a vulnerable piece of code that is able to be exploited via this command injection. So for those of you that don't read Rust, I'll kind of walk through what's going on here. We declare the function main, pretty standard stuff. We have the print line macro that just prints a string, and we get an input string from the user. So we flush out standard out, and if it fails, we print this string, but we read in from standard in, which is the command line, into the input variable. And this is a mutable reference to the input variable. And if that fails, we print this out. We then run a command via the command library, via the standard process library. And in Rust, what we're doing here is we're creating a new instance of the command structure. We're saying we want to give it test.bat. And as an argument, we want to give it the input from the user. So again, like before, this is us giving input to the program, and then it's putting that into the arguments of the system command. So here I've compiled that Rust example that takes advantage of the vulnerability, and we're in a Windows command line. I know, Windows, hide your children. We have the, the program here, and what it does is it it runs, takes our input and gives it to the file test.bat. And all test.bat does is emits the input as argument received. The vulnerability is in the fact that we can inject commands into the .args library or the .args function, right? So the way we can do this is if we do, you know, CVE, whatever, and we type this, this, we escape out of that system command that I can do and who am I? 
it not only says argument received this, but then it runs that command in the batch file. So not great. So the vulnerability is if you are running a .bat file, if you're running a Windows batch file and also allow the user to give it an argument, you're able to inject arbitrary commands into this field. I'll say that one more time for those of you in the back that can't hear. If you're running a batch file in Windows, in Rust, and you allow the user to pass in an argument, then you get command execution. This is why I'm a little upset with the rating that GitHub gave this uh, the CVE, right? It's not great. I don't like that we have command injections in Rust. For you go and comment, oh, Rust shill or whatever, let me explain myself. I understand that this is a vulnerability in Rust language, I admit it, like this is a bug in Rust that is very, very bad. The reason that I'm upset is that I don't think it justifies a 10 out of 10, and here's why. When you have a bug that is a 10 out of 10, the 10 out of 10 implies that everyone that uses this piece of software, like Windows, for example, is vulnerable to this bug. And also this bug is remote, unauth code execution, like hide your kids, hide your wife, like it's going down, like things are bad, okay? That is not the case for this one. In this case, you have to be running a batch file via command and also need to be giving the user the power to put an argument into that batch file and the vulnerability is in the parsing of that argument in .arg. Now I acknowledge that's a logic error in Rust. It's not good and it obviously is very dangerous and it should be patched out. I'm not saying that it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. I just don't think that it's a 10 out of 10 big deal. Again, when I hear 10 out of 10, I hear remote Windows vulnerability, completely RCE, it's happening everywhere. It's in the SMB stack or it's in the IP stack of Windows. I think it's really important that when we assign CVEs, we don't go over the top because then it degrades the value of the CVE meter, in my opinion. I think the reason this is getting so much attention is because typically when you're doing actions that are injectable, right? So you're forming a command that's going to run in an environment that requires it to be sanitized, right? So for example, a, a command to run on the command line or maybe an SQL query. A lot of libraries offer this way of what is called parameterizing that call. So instead of doing, you know, select all from users where password equals blank and you just put the user data directly into there, you can parameterize it so that you prevent the user from being able to put that bad data in there. And so we kind of get a parameterization library via command. So when you put data into .arg, the expectation is that it behaves the way that parameterized queries would work in SQL. That being said, obviously because of this vulnerability, it's not how it works. We just saw here, here before that we're able to take complete advantage of it. Um, but, but do I think that this warrants a 10 out of 10? Not really. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it shed some light on this CVE. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like, and then go follow me on Twitch because I stream there too. Also, if you're not aware of the XZ situation, the back door in a public library, that whole thing is crazy. Go watch it here. We'll see you there.